Hi guys, it's HBYT and welcome back to a brand new video. Now because I do review a lot of different smartphones, one of the big questions I get asked all the time is why do some smartphone manufacturers have one camera lens, some have two, three, four and even five. That's right, right here we have the Nokia 9 PureView and I'm going to put it through its paces and see exactly why it has that many camera lenses and whether it's really necessary or whether it's a bit of a gimmick. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Right, so the majority of this video is of course going to be around the camera, but I'll also touch on the phone as a whole because there are a few things you might want to know if you are of course looking to buy this device. Right, so what lenses do we actually have on this device? We have five 12 megapixel sensors. Not only do we have two RGB lenses, but we also have three black and white ones as well. Also involved in the setup, we have a TOF or a time of flight, which is gonna help with depth effect, bokeh, etc. And we'll get to that in a second. But what's really different about how these are set up compared to other devices on the market is that all of the lenses work in tandem when you take a photo, they're all involved. And I think that's pretty remarkable. And because these lenses do all work in tandem, it means the phone can capture far more information and far more detail and and blend together that perfect photo. Well, some people will say there is no such thing as perfection, but it certainly helps. One of the downsides of having five lenses all gathering information and putting it into one photo, the processing time does feel a little bit long and hopefully they can improve that in a future product. So one big feature about the 9 PureView is the fact that not only can you take JPEG photos, but also you can save them as raw files as well, which of course is great if you wanna then go on and edit them afterwards because it will be a larger file, much better quality, and great for editing that picture into a masterpiece. JPEG is a fine, great for social media, for example, but if you do wanna up your photo game, then getting something like Adobe Lightroom, you can really create some astounding shots. Now in Adobe Lightroom, you can enhance lots of different areas of the standard photo you've just taken. So if you go into the light section, you can change the exposure, contrast, highlights, and shadows, etc. You can go into the color tab and you can change temperature, tint, vibrance, and saturation. Again, great for making your photos pop. And then of course you've got things like crop and healing a bit of a cheat and you want to brush a few bits out you can do that here and again using this software combined with that raw file which you can turn on on the 9 pure view then it's a match made in heaven now if we just have a quick overview of this camera app we've got photo video slow motion time lapse pro bokeh and monochrome as well and you've also got panorama and square now in terms of using this device for bokeh shots for example that depth perception where you get that lovely sharp focal point and then the rest of the shot has that nice blur effect to it again really makes that picture stand out you can either use the bokeh mode or once you've taken a photo and this will only work with jpeg not the raw files you can tap the edit button next to the share button and then and tap edit again to open the depth settings. In here you can now adjust the background and foreground blur to get that effect right for you because certain visuals on photos are subjective. Some people will prefer the background to be really blurred to make the image pop out more or some people would prefer it to be a little bit more natural. So again you can use the slider to make sure that that effect is right for you. Now pro mode will obviously give you more control over your specific photos like changing white balance, shutter speed and ISO. So for those of you out there that that want to get your photos as close to perfection as possible with the first shot making the edit much easier of course pro mode is always going to be a better option for you and it does make the overall experience feel much more like you're shooting on an slr now there's a feature called depth map and if you turn this on the nokia 9 pure view can capture up to 1200 levels of depth which is pretty insane if you think about it's a smartphone close-up shots can capture incredibly crisp and clear photos with some incredible amount of detail. From buildings to landscapes to animals, it's, it's really impressive. And using those native black and white sensors, you can get some wicked black and white photos. Great for portraits, city shots, etc. And because this phone runs using the Android One operating system made by Google, you also have Google Photos, which means you can also change the blur effect using the Google Photos app. And for you guys out there that don't know about Android One, it's basically stock Android and the feel and experience of using this device feels very much like using a Google Pixel phone. Another feature with this camera is called Bo Bothy, but Bothy, 
not really sure how to pronounce it, but basically what this mode means is you can take photos and videos using the front and rear cameras at the same time. So if you're vlogging, for example, and you wanna have split screen or picture in picture, where you wanna show different perspectives, like you're taking a photo of yourself and what you can see at the same time, again, that's a pretty unique feature. Now the front camera is a 20 megapixel sensor, and the different modes are pretty similar to the rear. We've got square, bokeh, pro, photo, video, and time-lapsed as well. And in terms of video, you can shoot a maximum of Quad HD at 30 frames a second, which is decent. There aren't many smartphone cameras front-facing anyway that can shoot in Quad HD, 4K, etc. Now, personally, with the inclusion of five lenses on a smartphone, it does feel a little bit like a missed opportunity not having a wide-angle lens, but you can't have everything. Now, before we get to my overall conclusion, I just want to very quickly touch on the other aspects of the phone as well, because that might be make or break for you personally. You might be in it for the camera, but you also need a few other things. Android 9, straight from the gate. Does that rhyme? <laughs> We've got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845, six gigabytes of RAM. We've got a 5.99 inch Quad HD Plus display, and it does look pretty vibrant, pretty nice. The Android One operating system, as mentioned before, is very smooth. That combined with the Snapdragon 845 works great. I have noticed a few little lags here and there going between the different modes on the camera, but outside of that, it seems to be performing really well. In display, fingerprint sensor as well, which seems to be pretty quick. You do have to press down fairly firmly. I would prefer it if you only needed to press down quite lightly, and the actual sensor section seems a little bit higher than other devices, but once I've got used to it, it hasn't really been a problem. 18 watts fast charge, and fast wireless charging at 10 watts as well. And the actual aesthetics of the phone, while you do have little bezels top and bottom, they're not massive, equally, they're not bezel-less, and some people will see that as a negative, other people don't mind small bezels, and other people actually like bezels, so that will of course be a decision you'll have to make. It's very light, it's comfortable in the hand, it's got a lovely sort of midnight blue and champagne gold rim around the outside of it, which are probably my two favorite colors on a smartphone. And considering we've got so much camera tech inside this device, we have no camera bumps at all. And it looks very sleek and they've done a very, very good job. And the price is really competitive as well. You get a pretty great phone, some amazing camera features, all for quite a bit less than the majority of flagship phones on the market. So, down to my original question. Is having lots of camera lenses on a smartphone important or is it a bit of a gimmick? And my, my truthful, honest answer is, while I personally feel you don't necessarily need lots of different camera lenses on a smartphone, you can quite easily take some great photos with just the one lens, for example. I can't say it's a gimmick, because it just gives you so many more options to be able to create photos that are personal and individual to you. So being able to create photos with amazing depth, black and white, stunning crisp close-up shots, and being able to tailor them to the individual is something that you simply can't get from having one lens. Here's where you guys come in. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the Nokia 9 PureView. And do you think that smartphones should only have one camera lens or do you think there are significant advantages of having two, three, four, five lenses on your device? Like and share if you did enjoy this video and found it helpful. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you're new to the channel and want to be notified every time I post a video on anything tech, pretty much daily content here on YouTube. I'll love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Says BYT, peace out.